Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane of Teach Talk, where learning is fun and easy. If this is your first time watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button so you'll get notified on our next videos. Welcome to Shensha Amazing! Shensha Amazing! Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang mga science concepts from grade 7 to grade 12. Kasama ang topics in general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science. At dito, bida ang agham. Ang mga organisms na nabibilang sa kingdom protista at tinatawag ng mga protis ay nahati sa three major groups. The animal-like protozoa, eukaryotic algae, and fungus-like slime molds. Protozoa comes from the Greek words meaning first animals because their behavior is animal-like. Bakit nga ba sinasabing animal-like ang behavior ng protozoa? They are animal-like in a sense that they move around in order to find their prey or their food. For example, this paramecium has cilia. Ano ba ang cilia? Cilia are small hair-like structures that helps the paramecium collect its food. It sweeps away the food particles into the paramecium, forming food vacuoles. Para madirekta ito sa oral grooves ng paramecium o ang sinasabing mouth ng paramecium. Kung makapansin niyo sa picture, Ito ang oral groove ng paramecium at ang mga circle na parang bubbles are the food vacuoles absorbed by the paramecium for their nutrients. We will explore more about paramecium and its relatives in our topic for today which is all about protozoans. Protozoans are eukaryotic, ibig sabihin meron silang DNA na enclosed sa isang nucleus, and they have membrane-bound organelles in their cell. And they are single-celled organisms. This means that they exist as only one cell. Protozoans are represented by four major groups. First, we have flagellates, ciliates, sarcodina, and sporozoans. Let's start with flagellate. Bakit ba tinawag ang protozoans na ito na flagellate? Tinawag silang flagellates because they move about o gumagalaw sila gamit ang flagella. Ano ba ang sinasabing flagella? This is the thread-like structure in a cell. Para siyang sinulid o buntot na naka-extend from the original cell. Examples of flagellates are free-living chlamydomonas. Ito ang flagella ng isang chlamydomonas. Meron siyang dalawang flagella. Another example are parasitic trichomonas. Nasaan ba ang flagella ng trichomonas? Ito siya. Meron din tayong flagellates that live singly or isa lang siya just like euglena. Ito ang flagella ng isang euglena. Meron tayong nabubuhay as one. Meron din tayong mga flagellates that live in colonies just like Sinura. Hindi siya masyadong obvious, pero ito ang flagella ng mga Sinura. The second major group of protozoans are ciliates. This group of protists are provided with numerous hair-like cilia. They move with the help of cilia. Kaya nga tinawag silang ciliates. Maraming variation ang ciliates. For instance, the slipper-shaped paramecium is surrounded with cilia. Nasaan ba ang cilia dito? Ito. If you can notice, malaki ang, ang pinagkaiba ng flagella at cilia. Yung flagella, isa lang siya at mahaba. Pero ang cilia, they are small, hair-like structures. And in this case, pinapalibutan nila ang paramecium. On the other hand, ang cilia naman ng vorticella ay confined to the upper bell-shaped part. Kung sa paramecium nakapalibot ang cilia, 
Sa vertisela naman, nasa isang part lang siya. Our third major group is Sarcodina. These protists are unicellular organisms na walang definite shape. Bakit kaya wala silang definite shape? Kasi ang cell membrane nila is so flexible that they change shape constantly. They move around with the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia or pseudopodium if singular literally means false feet. Bakit false feet? They are feet in the sense that they are used for movement. And they are false in the sense na hindi sila permanent. They are formed kapag kailangan at kapag hindi na sila kailangan, nawawala sila. Some organisms belonging to Sarcodina are the amoeba. Nasaan ba ang pseudopodia ng amoeba? This one. This is used to engulf food. Another example of Sarcodina is the radiolarian. Nasaan ba ang pseudopods ng radiolarian? Ito siya. They are spiky. The pseudopods of radiolarians are specifically called axopodia. They are much more complex compared to the other types of pseudopods. Our last major group of protozoans are the sporozoans. They are all parasitic and they produce spores at a certain stage of their life. Kaya nga tinawag silang sporozoans. They are parasites because they can easily pass their parasitic spores from one host to another. Bakit ba madaling mapasa ang spores? These spores are light and tiny and are easily scattered by wind, water, and other agents from one host to another. Isang halimbawa ng parasitic na sporozoan ay ang makikita natin na nag infect sa red blood cells. If you can notice, that is the normal red blood cell. Pero, once it is infected by a parasite belonging to the sporozoans, it will look like this. This specific parasite is called the plasmodium. Plasmodium is a sporozoan that causes malaria in people. How do protozoans affect us? Are they important? Yes, they have a very important role in food chains and they play as mutualists and pathogens. Pathogens are microorganisms that can cause disease. For example, our drinking water becomes unpleasant and tastes awful when Cyanura uvelia are present in large numbers. Other flagellates causes diseases in men. One example is the Trypanosoma gambiense, which causes gambian sleeping sickness. This is a disease characterized by increased physical weakness and mental depression, which leads to death kapag hindi nagamot. Another harmful protozoa is one that lives in the intestines of man. Man gets infected through contamination of food or tubig. This amoeba, in Tamiba histolytica, can produce ulcers on the walls of the intestines and cause abdominal pain, diarrhea, or bloody diarrhea. Kahit maraming protozoans ang parasitic, there are actually a small number of protozoans which are very harmful to their hosts. Some just live as parasites. At ang pinakamahalagang role ng protozoa in the biosphere is in mineralizing nutrients, making them available for use by plants and other soil organisms. The recycled nutrients are then used to make new plants and are used by other organisms. It's good time! I will give you 3 minutes to answer this short quiz para malaman natin if you really learned something from our lesson about protozoans. After 3 minutes, we will check.
Time's up. Let's check if your answers are correct. Number one, pseudopodia literally means blank. Pseudo means false. Podia means feet. Number one is false feet. Number two, free-living Chlamydomonas have thread-like blank to help their movement. Ano nga ulit yung Chlamydomonas? Ito siya. Ano ang tawag sa thread-like structure na yan? This is called flagella. Number three, this organism has needle-like pseudopodia. Para siyang rigid and spiky na mga structure. Yung organism na yon ay radiolarian. Tingnan natin ang picture ng radiolarian. Number four, paramecium is surrounded with hair-like black. This is a paramecium. Anong tawag sa nakasaran sa kanya, yung maliliit na para mga buhok? It is called cilia. Last number, it is passed from one host to another among sporozoans. Tandaan natin ang mga sporozoans are parasites and their spores can easily be passed through wind and water causing some diseases. The answer here is spores. We want to know your score. Kindly comment your score over 5 in the comment section below. That ends our Shansha Amazing episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video to your friends so that we can learn together. Bye!